How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? In this episode of The Rewind, we take a look at the 2018 Mac Mini. Now, there is no new Mac Mini for 2020 just yet, but what Apple has done is that they've added more storage to the two base configurations, which makes the entry-level Mac Mini a better deal than before. But besides that, not much else has changed with the 2018 Mac Mini. Is it still worth considering in 2020? I answer that in this episode of The Rewind. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. So as I noted at the outset, this is the same Mac Mini from 2018. Not much has changed here. What has changed? the storage capacity of the entry-level base configuration. So the 799 Mac Mini now comes with 256 gigabytes of flash storage instead of that paltry 128 gigabytes of storage. So 128 is no longer even a storage option in the build to order setup process here for the Mac Mini, which is a great thing, right? And then you get 512 gigabytes of storage on the 1099 config. But there's even more to this story besides just storage capacity. The higher tiers also result in having significantly faster write performance. Now, another reason why I still love the 2018 Mac Mini is because it is super compact. There's no other desktop Mac, and that includes the iMac, the iMac Pro, the Mac Pro, of course. With this form factor, this thing is super lightweight. It is very small. Here it is next to my iPhone 11 Pro Max, and you can really see just how tiny the Mac Mini is. It is designed to be placed virtually anywhere. So right under your Pro Display XDR, it's gonna fit perfectly. Right under your desk, in your entertainment center, on the floor, wherever you can think to place this thing, it's probably gonna fit there just because it's designed to be compact. There's no unsightly power brick. And while it's definitely not whisper quiet, it's relatively quiet considering how much stuff is packed into this little chassis. Now, as mentioned, this Mac mini is from 2018. So with that said, it features the same old eighth generation CPU build to order options. So for the 799 model, you get a 3.6 gigahertz quad core Intel Core i3 processor, and that's without Turbo Boost. So I highly, highly recommend that if you don't make any other upgrades to the Mac Mini, you at least upgrade to the Core i5 six core processor. And if you can swing it, go ahead and get the 3.2 gigahertz i7, which Turbo Boosts up to 4.6 gigahertz. It's just better to go ahead and get the best processor that you can in this machine. And you'll see that that six core i7 is actually no slouch. In single core, it beats the iMac Pro, and there's not a big gulf either with the multi-core performance between these two machines. Now the Mac Mini's biggest performance deficiency is without a doubt its GPU. It uses a very slow and underwhelming Intel UHD 630 integrated GPU. So as you can see, there is a massive difference in performance between it and the Vega 56 in the base model iMac Pro. But that's where this guy comes in right here. This is the Blackmagic eGPU Pro, which also has a Vega 56 inside. It has two Thunderbolt 3 ports so you can actually daisy chain. That allows you to connect something like a Pro Display XDR to your Mac Mini and get full 6K output as you can see right here. So full 6K resolution with the 2018 Mac Mini thanks to the eGPU Pro. So that's going to allow you, like I said, to get that full 6K resolution on the Pro Display XDR. But not just that, just performance overall from a graphics perspective with things like Final Cut Pro, gaming, pretty much anything graphics related. Now I prefer the eGPU Pro from Blackmagic because it gives you iMac Pro-like power, it's whisper quiet, and it features the two Thunderbolt 3 ports needed to connect directly to a Thunderbolt 3 display like the Pro Display XDR. All right, so let's talk about my favorite thing about this Mac Mini, and that is the easily upgradable RAM. Of course, the Mac Mini comes with eight gigabytes of RAM in a base model. You can upgrade though to 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of RAM, and that'll set you back an insane $1,000. Now, considering you can get the same amount of RAM for less than half that on Amazon, it's a no-brainer. You wanna do this yourself, and that's easy. When you have this iFixit toolkit, they are not sponsoring this video, but I just love this thing because it's super easy to use. So I started the clock 
Use the little remover tool to remove the back cover. And now I have the T6 Torx screwdriver and I'm just removing all six screws on the back of the little antenna housing here. All right, just slide it over like that because there is a connection from that antenna to the logic board. So you just wanna unscrew that one screw using the same T6 driver, pop out the little socket that connects the antenna to the logic board. And now there are four additional screws you need to unscrew to remove the fan. These two are T6 drivers as well. I'm gonna take all those out and I just use a little pair of tweezers here to grab those screws since they are not magnetic to remove those and now just lift up. Now there is a socket connection to the logic board. Just pull up that disconnects the socket, set the fan to the side. And now you wanna remove the LED connection from the logic board, just pull up. And once you've done that, now it's time to disconnect the power supply. Just pull up on that. That takes a little bit of finagling. There we go. All right, so the power supply is out. Now it's time to unscrew the two screws that keep the logic board tied down. So we'll use our T10 driver there. And there we go. So now just turn it around and push up on the little ears. Make sure everything's out of the way. There we go. So we've removed the logic board from the Mac mini chassis. Let's keep the time going though. Now we're gonna use our T5 driver to remove the Ram shield. So you just wanna unscrew the four screws, two on the left, two on the right, and then just slide the Ram shield up and away like that. Now you can remove the two little pieces of rubber on each side, spread apart the tension clips and you can remove the two single outline DIMM modules from their sockets. So in this case, you would just replace the two four gigabyte sticks with two 32 gigabyte sticks or two 16 gigabyte sticks, depending on how much money you have to spend there. But the point is here, I was able to upgrade from eight gigabytes to 64 gigabytes in less than 15 minutes. Really, I could probably do it in 10 minutes, but I kind of messed around a little bit. Uh, here, I'm putting the back cover back on. Look, we're 13 minutes in and the upgrade is finished. So now we have 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is great for intense applications like Final Cut Pro 10. Now, another reason I really love the Mac Mini and why it is second to only the Mac Pro in terms of versatility is its IO selection. You get two USB-A ports, you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack connection, you get HDMI output, but of course that is just half the story. The real big story here is the inclusion of not just two, but four Thunderbolt 3 ports shared across two Thunderbolt 3 buses. So you can see all four of those ports here on the rear of the Mac Mini. Uh, this allows you to connect all sorts of external peripherals, GPUs, PCIe SSDs, 10 gigabit Ethernet NICs, Thunderbolt 3 hubs, docks, audio interfaces, portable SSDs, the list goes on and on, right? There's just tons of things that you can do with Thunderbolt 3. It's what makes the Mac mini so incredibly flexible and versatile. And finally, 10 gigabit Ethernet is a nice luxury with the Mac mini. Now, of course, you can always buy a 10 gigabit Ethernet NIC, that connects via Thunderbolt 3, as you can see right here. So this allows you to have 10 gigabits per second connectivity to something like a Synology NAS, which is super handy when you're archiving large videos and things of that nature. But you can see right here, you see that 10 gigabit ethernet NIC built right into the Mac mini. That's convenient because it means you don't have to use up a Thunderbolt 3 port to enjoy 10 gigabit ethernet connectivity. So that's just super handy to have, just plug right in here and you're connected at 10 gigabits per second. The nice thing is that you can upgrade from regular gigabit ethernet to 10 gigabit ethernet for just $100 more during the build to order process. And if you know you're gonna be connecting to these high speed devices, you might as well just build it in right from the get go. So ladies and gentlemen, it's 2020, right? But the 2018 Mac mini still holds up pretty well. I use it for a lot of things. I use it to edit videos with Final Cut Pro 10. In fact, I'm editing this particular video using the Mac Mini. I love it because I have fast connectivity to my Synology NAS. I have tons of Thunderbolt 3 IO so I can connect to my eGPU and connect to the Pro Display XDR with ease. I can save hundreds by upgrading the RAM myself. With the right config, this thing performs very much like a baby iMac Pro. So even in 2020, the 2018 Mac Mini holds up well.
What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.